Hello everyone and thanks for taking the time to review the real estate market analysis for Cupertino for June of 2008. My name is Robert Whitelaw and I'm a licensed real estate broker in the state of California. I'm also a member of the National Association of Realtors and a certified ePro. And I'm happy to announce that as of this month I am also the president and CEO of Whitelaw & Sons Real Estate Services right here in Silicon Valley. I'm very excited to be starting my new business, and I, and I hope that all of you will uh, consider my office when you have real estate needs uh, now and in the future. Now, we're going to be serving all of Silicon Valley, and the, the, we're going to have a, a new website built around the new business at www.wnsons.com. Uh, we're going to be a full-service real estate office. That means anything, any of your needs relating to real estate, you can come to us, and we can give you a hand. And finally, just like most other companies tend to say we're going to be focused on what matters most to clients uh, and in the world of real estate that's a little bit different I know everybody who starts a new business starts off saying those kinds of things but the truth is that in the world of real estate we've all been told for an exceptionally long time that certain numbers matter that the uh, that a top agent is one that sold the most homes or made the most money last year when in reality those two things don't really have much of a relationship to you as a buyer or a seller when you're thinking about what you need most when you want to sell your home. Now, what you want to know is that when you list your home, your home is going to get sold. That's the first priority. You'd be surprised how many top agents out there take a certain number of listings and only sell a very small percentage of them. It's all a numbers game. They get as many listings as possible so that those listings will simply sell by market activity versus any activity on their part. That's not the philosophy of my company. The performance and compensation that agents get in my office is based in large part on the fact that they actually get every listing sold. The goal is 100% sales of all listings that come into the office. Next is how many days on the market. We analyze in every report that you ever get from any real estate agent, they're going to give you a ballpark figure on what the average days on market is for your home based on comparable properties. Well, we take that one step farther and actually make it a important criteria to meet that number. So whatever the average is for the sales time for your home, again, how we measure our performance will be based on beating the average days on market for your particular property in your particular neighborhood. And finally, getting as close to or above your list price. How well we do in that is important to you. So it should be important to us. So part of how our corporate, my company is organized is we base performance on that number. So you're not just being based on some things that might be important to real estate agent and real estate offices. We're basing performance and evaluation on how we perform on these important criteria for sellers. And for buyers, it's important for us to get homes, negotiate transactions where you pay the lowest price possible, and that's the criteria where agents are judged at White Lawn Sons. Now, thank you for giving me an opportunity to give you a little bit of a promo there from my business. Now, I'd also like to send out word to everyone that as part of a sort of an inaugural special offer for coming out of the company, I want to offer everyone out there a 25% buyer's rebate. That's right. We're going to go ahead and give 25% of what the compensation would be to the buyer's agent back to the buyer in the escrow process. Now this offer is going to expire on August 31st, 2008, but the good news is you don't have to actually buy before August 31st, 2008. You just need to contact me and reserve your 25% rebate. Now some uh, conditions and restrictions do apply, so go ahead and give me a call and I can give you all the information. You can also find it at my website. If you'd like to get in contact with me directly, you can call 408-852-0525 or use any of the methods at the end of this presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the numbers for Cupertino for June of 2008. First, we're going to look at the inventory numbers. And as you can see, unlike other parts of the city and the county in general, or other parts of the county, other cities and the county in general, Cupertino is not seeing the dramatic increase in inventory that other areas are. It's it's still a, at a very healthy level. Uh, we've actually had higher inventories back in 2006 and 2005 uh, and 2004 when, when the markets were actually better. So as far as keeping the inventory down, as far as keeping that supply and demand equation sort of calibrated, Cupertino has had a great market for that. Now, as far as list, and that and that came up with, a, the inventory is actually only up 6.8% from last year. That gave us a total of 79 homes on the market. That's only five more homes la this year than last year. Now, if we look at the new listings, those are actually down 5.7% um, for a total homes listed of 50. That's, a, that's three fewer homes 
then listed in June of 2007. Now, if we go ahead and look at the sales, we can see sales numbers are actually up from last year. They're up 11.8%. Uh, the total number of homes sold in June of 2008 was 38, and that's an increase of four homes from the same time last year. So no matter how you, you slice it, Cupertino's market's doing excellent on the supply and demand numbers. For every home that sells, there's about two homes on the market. That's great for sellers. And that to think of those numbers in another way, if the market conditions froze where they are now with inventory and sales as they are, it would take us just a hair over two months to get the entire inventory in Cupertino sold. Now let's go ahead and look at these same numbers of supply and demand going back just months. We're going to be going back to March of last year, and we'll start with inventory. Um, you can see that we've got uh, some interesting trends here. We saw a little bit of a, of a big bump there in April. Uh, nothing to get too concerned about. We also saw a, a nice substantial drop after that. Uh, we're not seeing anything that's seasonally strange. All of that makes sense. People are anticipating the market season for selling coming so the, the inventory tends to go up during those times uh, we actually saw a netting a, a net in decrease of 2.5 percent that's a change of two homes so two fewer homes in the inventory this month than last month the number of homes that was listed was down 16.7 percent so 10 fewer homes were listed in june than in may and as far as sales are concerned sales were down a little bit this is we if we look at last last uh, year, we can see that that's kind of on par. The change that we've seen uh, is is to be expected. The change between, we saw June sales numbers down from May, far more substantially down. Numbers just not at the same level. If we expect to see the same things next month that we saw last year, we would expect sales to increase a little bit more and for inventory to continue to go down. And I don't see any reason to expect that to, to not be the case. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the ratio. Um, this is the number, the relationship between inventory and the total number of homes sold. And this is now going back to 1999. You can see very little change. It's been very healthy from 2004 all the way up until now. Uh, just a hair over over two. So for every home that sells, there's two on the market. Uh, obviously, in 2004, 2005, that, that number was even more aggressive. But this just is a, sort of a nice metric to look at when you're trying to get a general health of what's going on between what's being sold and what's being offered on the on the market right now. Now let's go ahead and look at home prices. Uh, this is this is kind of an interesting graph for this particular month because it actually g gives the impression that we're actually seeing a drop in the average price of homes. A little bit less the case. What we're really seeing is a drop in the number of homes selling at the higher end. So if you have a home that's uh, middle upper middle price for Cupertino you don't need to start whipping out your calculator and, and determining how much less you should take for your home if you're trying to market it notice the median price stayed almost exactly the same as it was last month which which just basically tells us the point that's the exact middle of the number of homes that sold so if we had a if we had a you know about a hundred homes that middle point 50 homes sold above that price and 50 homes sold below that price so all in all this this isn't something I would I would suggest getting too terribly worried about now as I said we had a total number of sold homes of 38 the average home price change is down 7.3 percent uh, the average home price was 1 million with a median of 1 million the highest priced single family residential home in Cupertino sold uh, was on Merriman Drive, sold for $2,250,000, down from the list price of $2,480,000, and that was on the market for 62 days before it went into escrow. The lowest priced single family residential home in Cupertino was on Pendergast Avenue. That home sold for $647,000, down from a list price of $698,888, and that was on the market for a total of 44 days. Now, the average list price, excuse me, the average price per square foot for homes that sold in Cupertino was $652.09. Last month, that number was $688.69. So we had a bit of a decrease in the average price per square foot. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the home price numbers just going back to previous months. As we can see, the average sales price has been trending down a bit. If we look at the same time period last year, there was sort of the same level of fluctuation, but we've had a little bit more of, of what we'd call a downturn 
Uh, it seems to be trending a little bit down. But what we will probably see, if we see the same sort of performance we saw last year, we'll get a little bit of a bump in the summer months, and I wouldn't expect that to not happen. I, I would I would expect that, that we will still get a price bump next month and the following month. Now, from month to month, from May to June, the price change was 7.7%, and the median price change was down 4.2%. Again, look at that median price. The median and the uh, sales price just extremely close. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the days to sell. And I'm going to give you a little bit more extra data on this one because I think that the number here, while it's not outrageous, it's it, I mean it's we're basically seeing 37 days to get a home sold in Cupertino, and that's ex extremely reasonable, particularly when considering the rest of the market out there. Because we're seeing a, a steady increase, it might be giving people the impression that that um, things are getting much worse in general out there as far as how long it's taking to get a home sold, and that really just isn't the case now. In, in this average number, the numbers to sell, sell increased by 12 when compared to the previous year. So it's taking 12 more days on average to get a home sold than it did a year ago, and that's a 48% increase. Now, and that's but what I wanted to do is break this down for you, because what we have is just a few homes that are really skewing it. We've got a couple of homes that took well over 200 days to sell, and when you're only, when you only have about 38 homes that sell. Just a couple of homes like that can really boost up the numbers a little bit. So let's go ahead and review those real quickly. Now the total days on zero days on market. There was one home that had zero days on market, and that basically means it sold before it even got entered into the multiple listing service. Now homes that sold in one to seven days, four. Homes that sold in eight to thirty days, twenty-four. Homes that sold in thirty-one to ninety days, six. Homes that sold in ninety-one days or more, three. So if we do the math on that, we can see that 78% of the homes that sold in the month of June in Cupertino sold in less than 30 days. So the real number here, while it indicates 37, it's being pushed so far up because of some of these other homes that were on the market for so long. The real number for the average seller in Cupertino is probably more like 25 to 30 days versus the 37 days. And there's and frankly, there really isn't enough of a change, enough of a variation there for anyone to really get worried about any anything in the, in this range of days on market I think is 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 good. I think a lot of people would be hard pressed to to get their home sold that quick anyway. Most folks have trouble getting ready that quickly to move out of their house. Now let's go ahead and look at the days to sell in past months. See if we can see what the seasonal influences are. Now of course we saw homes going in the winter time things usually go crazy. On average if we look at last year, uh we can see that again we, we've compared to June of last year to this year, but if we look at the run-up to each month, we can see that things were actually quite a bit uh, on the on the market for a bit longer in April of last year. In April, in April of excuse me, April of this year, we had an increase, in, a pretty dramatic increase. Things in general were selling a little bit quicker last year, uh, but not in March. In March, it was 41 days last year, 33 days this year. All in all, at the numbers that we're at. This this is nothing to be to be concerned about. We see the sort of seasonal things, but I'm not, I'm not seeing anything in the days to sell that I think is is something anybody needs to to mark down as an important thing to watch. All right, that is about it for this month's for the June 2008 data for Cupertino, California. I appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to these evaluations of the market conditions of Cupertino. If you'd like to read any of the other articles I've written regarding real estate or uh, my video, my podcast, or my other video presentations for other communities, feel free to find those at www.soldbyrobert.com. If you'd like to get in contact with me directly uh, via email with any questions, ideas, suggestions, or observations, please send those to robert at soldbyrobert.com. Or if you'd like to call me about relating to real estate, I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, your situation or, or any questions you might have about our local markets. Feel, feel free to call me at 408-852-0525. And if you are more uh, computer oriented here and you want to sit at your desktop and instant message me, feel free to do that at AOL Instant Messenger, Google Talk, and Yahoo Instant Messenger. My screen name is The Rebel Broker. Uh, I also have a Skype, and if you just do a search on Rebel Broker, you will find me on Skype that way. And of course, as always, referrals are appreciated. If you or anyone you know is interested in buying or selling real estate in Silicon Valley, please feel free to give me a call, and I would appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll talk to you all next time.